walking in the Jehovah Rapheka covenant. We're going to take communion in a few. I'm going to release you to go. Knowing that I won't worry about you for one year. Since I didn't hear your amen. Unless you are going to ask me to put to bed. Any other thing? No. Lift up your right hand and say, I won't be there. Good health is an unimaginable blessing. You don't value it until you have a challenge. No, you're not hearing me. A few days ago, I was talking to a pastor and I saw the mouth bent and I saw the hand shaking. And I said, Kai, I know this is a very handsome young man. I said, so this is what sickness can do to somebody. Lift your hand. You won't be sick. Yeah. Every dream, every pursuit, every relationship, every calling will stand still when health is challenged. Is that true? Everything ends when health is challenged. It doesn't matter how anointed you are and what dreams you carry. If your health is down, your destiny is down. I stretch my hand toward you. Your health will never again be down. God will not take a journey with a man that doesn't have a prepared body. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5, he says, a body he has prepared for me. There's a kind of strength you need to be a destiny dominator. You're not hearing me. Outside of that, uh, how can you cope? Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, Pastor Godman, this afternoon, we're just talking about a few things. So he asked me, what are you doing? Well, that's uh, in the morning, around nine or so. As I'm lying down, he said, me too. He said, I left office almost midnight yesterday. As I was walking until this morning. You can't go far if you're a good sleeper. Lift your right hand. As you are hearing me now, anything that is holding your destiny down, my God, crush it. He can't take a journey with you if you are feeble. That's why when he brought them out of Egypt, Psalm 105 verse 37 records, he brought them out with silver and gold and there was not one feeble among their tribe. Even children were not feeble because they have to go through a terrible wilderness on their way to the promised land. How can they be weak? So he strengthened everybody. A body has he prepared for me. And took a bow shatter. Take your prepared body. So wholeness is God's plan for his people. Can I say wholeness? Are you okay? You are somehow sick? Then shout it like thunder. Wholeness is God's plan for my life. Shout amen like thunder. Whether it's spiritual wholeness, or mental wholeness, or emotional wholeness, are you with me? Or physical wholeness, or even social wholeness. Wholeness is God's plan for his people. 
Isaiah 33 verse 24. Isaiah 33 24. This is a night to open your Bible because our screams are off for a reason. It's not that they can't be put on, but they won't be put on. Isaiah 33, 24. Very quickly. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. When sin goes, the inhabitants cannot say, I am sick. Are you born again? Yes, Have you been forgiven your iniquity? Yes, you are not permitted to be sick. Yes. Therefore, I lift my hand over you. Yes. Every traceable infirmity in your life, die now. Yes. This is your last chance. Every traceable infirmity in your life, die now. Yes. The revelation of God's heart concerning sickness in his people is clear in the scriptures. How God thinks. In Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. Please, as you open your Bible, mark these passages. There's a reason. There's a reason we mark these things. When Satan begins to mark you, you pick the things you marked. So, don't just listen to because the day the attack comes, I may not physically be there. And you may call and my number didn't go through. You better know how to fight back. Are you still here? 26. And if Thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And we do that which is right in his sight. And we give ear to his commandments. And keep all his status. I will put none. Somebody shout none. None means how many? Wait, wait. None means how many? No means half percent. Twenty percent. No means how many. He said, I will not permit any of the diseases upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord. That what? He led thee. That's Yahweh Rafa. For where you get Rafaka or Rafa. The God, your personal doctor. Are you with me? The God, my personal physician. That's what he called himself. So, why you are busy saying, I called my doctor. Jehovah said, I am your doctor. <laughs> Lift your hand above your head. From today, never again will you suffer sickness. <laughs> Look at 23 verse 25. Of the same exodus. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. And I will take sickness away. From the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young. Nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days. I will fulfill. Lift your hand. I speak over you today. No sickness in our midst. Yeah. Nothing cast their young. Yeah. Nothing shall be barren. Yeah. Nothing shall die premature. Yeah. As your amen lands, let it happen in your father's house. Yeah. How does God react to sickness? In Luke 13 verse 16. Jesus was talking about the woman that was bound for 18 years. And he said, ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from her bondage. I mean, Jesus said, is it not right? 
ought not this woman to be free? And where you are sitting down here now, carrying migraine, Jesus is saying, ought not this man to be free? That diabetes, Jesus is saying, ought not this person to be free? And because you are here today, you are free. Yeah. I thought your amen would be louder. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 8, you see another case. This, a leper, from verse 1 to 3, that came to Jesus. I said, Jesus, if you will, if you are willing, if you want to, you can make me clean. And the Bible says Jesus went beyond the one to. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Jesus stretched his hand and Jesus touched the leper. Somebody say, he touched me. He touched me. Say louder, he touched me. he touched me. And you know that you are not permitted to touch a leper. But he touched him. And he said, I will be clean. And instantly, the sickness left. Why did he touch him to identify with his pain? To express willingness beyond measure. Anywhere you are hearing me now, God is willing for you to be free. Can I see you lift your hand and say, I am willing to release the sickness. I won't be sick. Can I hear amen like thunder? When we were younger, they told us that God uses sickness to test our faith. You are not hearing me. And that God cannot give you what you can't handle. So that thing that you carry is because you can handle it. That's nonsense. Ask chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of Jehovah. Uh -uh. Are you here? Is it not God that gave them? He was healing all that Jehovah was oppressing. Who was oppressing them? He was oppressed of the devil. He didn't say oppressed of virus. He didn't say oppressed of bacteria and fungi. He said oppressed of the devil. Stop talking HIV and fight Satan. Are you hearing me? Oppressed of the devil. Stop talking sickle cell and fight Satan. Once again, lift your right hand. Because by the time I'm done, we won't be praying much. This is a prayer now. I speak over you. Every power of infirmity in your body die now. Every spirit of infirmity in your body get out now. Receive immediate healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at five mysteries of covenant healing and health. Five mysteries of covenant healing and health. And I want you to be touching these things anytime you are challenged. The first one is the mystery of his suffering. The mystery of his suffering. The mystery of the suffering of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 53, if you get to verse 6, verse uh, 5, sorry. I can start from verse 4. It's better that way. Surely he has borne our griefs. The word griefs there is a Hebrew word for sickness. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and afflicted. This is a prophecy concerning the death Jesus was going to die. He said he's going to be broken. He's going to be afflicted. And the Jews are going to say, it's God punishing him for blasphemy. He said, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes. Louder, we are here. When Jesus went to the cross, it was to be a substitute for us. Somebody say substitute. When you see Jesus on the cross, stop looking at him as a martyr. He didn't die a martyr. He died as a substitute. Are you with me? When you look at him at the cross, see yourself at the cross. When you put that uh, necklace on your neck, the person on that thing is not Jesus, it's you. 
It was you that hung on the cross. Jesus didn't die as himself. He died as you. By, are you hearing my voice here? By his death, you, the judgment that was on you was taken away. You paid your price on the cross. You can't pay for sin a second time. You paid on Calvary. No, you're not hearing me. That's why you are not going to hell. You are not going to hell, not because you are perfect. You are not going to hell because you have gone to hell before. When he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. When he went into the underworld, you went into the underworld. When he was punished in hell, you are punished in hell. But then he arose again, and you arose in him. And now you stand there, never to die again. I speak over you today. Your destiny will not be abused. When they picked him up, they stripped him naked. He endured shame. When they picked him up, they put a crown of thorns on him. That was a sign of poverty. Because when God cursed Adam with poverty, he said, thorns and tistles, the earth will give to you. Are you hearing me here? When he was picked up, they took away his clothes and gave him 39 lashes. And I didn't mean Bikoboko. Truly, it was 39 times 12. Because the Roman soldiers, what they used to whip you, it looks like Koboko. But it has 12 sides to it. So the man is holding it. And whipping you is not by a soldier that met you on the road. Whipping is a process of execution in the Roman army. And there are soldiers trained to weep. That's their job. They're like people that hang people in prison. That 12 things you see there, they put broken bones on all of them. So they ask you to stand there. You watch the passion of the Christ. And the man holds that thing. And he strikes you and he wraps around you and he pulls it. And the skin tears off. By the time he has done 39, you are dead. He was bruised. He was wounded. They tore him apart so that you won't be sick. So if you are sick, then his sacrifice is in vain. Therefore, I stretch my hand toward in the name that's above every name. Every sickness in your body, get out. 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 In 1 Peter 2, 24. He said, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye, we are healed. His own self bear our sins on the cross. That we should live unto righteousness. And by his stripes, we, we are. Somebody say, we are. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Don't let the sound of the rain disturb you. Are you well? Yeah. Can I shout, we are? Yeah. Now point to where we are is. Yeah. Where is we are? Yeah. It's in the past. Yeah. Huh? So if you we are healed, then you are healed. And you is healed. And you will be healed. I can't hear your amen. amen. So he's not talking about God healing you now. You we are healed. Calvary brought you healing. As you are standing there now, receive the totality of your healing. Amen. The second mystery is the mystery of his spirit. His quickening spirit. The mystery of his quickening spirit. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand that the spirit of God is life. Somebody shout life. life. Shout life. life. Shout it loud, alive. life. Scream it like thunder, life. 
I remind you again of this. Can you lie down face up? I remind you again of this. God made mud. He just molded sand. Mud. Just like they used to, your grandfather used to mold juju. You are not hearing me. <laughs> he molded mud. When you're molding anything, mud, you don't look for bone to put inside. You just mold it. You don't put kidney inside. You don't put any liver. No pancreas. No bile duct. No womb. No heart. You don't put anything. Just mold. You don't put skull. You don't put brain. You don't put arteries. You don't put veins. Just mud. Everything was mud. Molded. But then God has had a discussion with his breath. A controllable shatter. God and his breath were in a meeting. And God showed breath the design he made for man. And God told the breath, this is what I'm sending you to do. I'm putting you into this man, this mother making. Bread, create the skull. Create the bread. Create the nerves. Create the bones. Create the kidney. Create the womb. Create the fallopian to bread. Look at the design. You are the builder. Build it. So God steps over the man. The mud is there. And God did. And breathed into this, this dead mud. The nemesh of life. The spirit of life. The breath of life. He entered this thing. And when the spirit rushed into this. The spirit settled down. Okay, this is where the brain will be. Put skull here. Put brain there. Let the hair grow out. Let the eyes, the retina come out. Let every part of it come. Let the nerves develop. Let the bones, okay, let there be a blood system. Are you hearing me? This is what the intestine will look like. The small intestine, the big intestine. He, he create, are you hearing my voice? Now that bread is the spirit of the living God. Rise up. I stretch my hand toward you. By that spirit, everything in your body will be created today. I can't hear you. Amen. The Bible calls the spirit of God life giving. Job 33, verse 4. He said, The spirit of the Lord has made me. The bread of the Almighty has given me life. The spirit. Made me. The bread get me life. Just like what I demonstrated for you right now. This guy is here. Are you guys okay? Yes, huh? Now when you were born again, there was an old you. And the spirit of God came and re-engineered you and produced a new you. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 3, he said, marvel not that I said to you in verse 3 that you, may be, you should be born again. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, that's why I say you should be born again. He said, the wind blows where it is. You hear the sound. You don't know where it's coming from, where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So you are born of the water and of the spirit. Are you here? Are you still hearing me? So no, 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 no. That spirit that Created the kidney, the liver, the prostrate. That spirit that created the womb. That spirit that created the fallopian tube you are complaining about. Is the spirit that entered you when you got born again. Is the spirit that entered you when you got filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to understand that the spirit dwelling in you is a quickening spirit. Are they hearing my voice? And he continually regenerates us. That's why Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead, 
it dwells in you. That spirit will quicken your mortal body. Are you hearing me here? So, 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 okay. Your kidney is having a problem. The spirit dwells in you. What do you do? Stir up the breath. Am I wasting time with somebody? Here? Your blood pressure is malfunctioning. Stir up the breath. Your eye is malfunctioning. Stir up the breath. The breath created, the breath can recreate. Am I talking to somebody? And by the time we are done today, you will see your body recreated. Somebody didn't say amen. A portion has been removed now. Lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus. I declare the breath of the Almighty has given me life. I declare no more sickness, no more disease. Can your amen be like thunder? That's what I wanted to catch. Tefin is a mystery of divine life. The third mystery, when we are talking about Healing and health is a vine. Somebody said the vine. In John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Every branch, the father is a husband man. Every branch in me that beareth no fruit, he take it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purge it. That may bring forth more fruit. He said, you are clean. Through the work which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, verse 4. And I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can ye. Except it abide in me. Verse 5, that's where I'm going to. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. And I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me. You can do nothing. Verse 8, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now verse 7, I end there. If he abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. There is something called abiding. Somebody say abiding. abiding. Those at the back, it's like you're sleeping. Can you shout abiding? abiding. Let me say abiding in the vine. How many of you are here in the vine? Are you, are you, are you abiding in the vine? Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? Okay. Uh, have you known of any tree that uh, uh, what is in the root does not get to the branches? Doesn't get to the leaves. You know of any tree like that? Huh? The same life in the root is the same life in the, the stem. The same life in the branches. Anywhere the life doesn't reach the place with us. Is that true? If you are in Christ, the life in Christ flows into you. No, they're not hearing me. How many of you believe that while you are here right now, the life of God is in you? Can you accept that? I said, can you accept that? I said, can you accept that? But I'm sure you know that when we're talking about being in the body of Christ, that being in church is part of being in the body. You're not here. A lot of people take it for granted. And that's why they're sick. That's why they struggle with anything. They, they just come to church because they're sick. They don't understand that being in church is part of divine life. When you connect to his body, you receive life. If you hear say yes. Psalm 84 verse 7. He said, all of them appear before God in Zion, so they go from strength to strength. When men appear before God in Zion, they go from strength to strength. So church breaks weakness. Abstaining from church is a sign up for weakness. 
Are they hearing me? Yes, well, you see, I, I don't really believe in that. Well, that's your problem. The body of Christ functions like a human body system. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16, let me read the New Living Translation. Ephesians 4 verse 16. Ephesians 4 verse 16, New Living Translation. It says, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow. So that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. He said, when we come together as a body of Christ, when each part fits together, he said, it helps the other part grow, helps the other part be healthy, helps the other part to move forward. So the body is built together. Are you with me? It's figurative for your physical body. But it's also figurative for the body of Christ as a whole. I'm speaking over you right now. That because you are connected to this vine and to the general body of Christ, sickness is gone from you. I wish I can hear your amen. amen. I curse that power of affliction. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. Do you know why there is diverse gifts in the body of Christ? The Bible says he gave many gifts so that people can profit without. So that this one, gift of healing, gift of prophecy, gift of uh, word of knowledge, gift of miracles and all of that. So that when we come together, one person's gift meets your need. You are sitting down there right now, not knowing the gift you carry. Some of you are even not aware of the gift you carry. But as we hold our hands in prayer right now, and we connect to one another, there's a transference of grace. I don't think, is anybody hearing me here today? That's why we have house fellowship. That's why we meet together in fellowship units. You hold your hands while you're praying. You don't know that right in that place, there's somebody that carries a gift that you need. You're not hearing me. You walk out of that meeting and suddenly you have a dream. Why did you have that dream? Because somebody ministered to you out of the gift of prophecy and you are not aware. You are not hearing me. The gift he carries was imparted into you. You go back home, lay down on the bed, saw a vivid dream that tells you something about your life by the impartation when we join hands to pray. I think I wasted my time. When we hasten to pray, something passed from somebody into you. It's a gift of healing. You walk back, the pain you carry to church has just gone. Why? Because, are you here? The gift of the walking of miracles, demons are cast out of you. We, you didn't even know, we just held hands to pray and something walked out of you. That's why being in the presence of God is important. How important. You remember when he said in James chapter 5 verse 14, he says, anyone sick among you, let him call for the elders. Then we hold hands with him. Then we lay hands on him. Then we pray. He said, number one, whatever sin he committed will be forgiven. Number two, the prayer of faith will save the sick. That's the system of the body. Now while we are sitting here now, there are elders around you. No, you're not hearing me. Different strata of leadership, different strata of age in the kingdom, different strata of encounters with God. They are all in this congregation. When you hold hands, healings are going on. I stretch my hand toward. Before you leave here today, the yoke break. I think I miss myself, somebody there. The yoke break. I said the yoke break. I said the yoke break. I said the yoke break. In First John chapter one verse seven. Is that when we have fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from our sin. And I tell people, one of the biggest crimes you can commit against your destiny is because of sin, run away from church. There are people that make you believe that church is only for good people. Don't believe that. Just come in here. No matter the mess you mess, hold the hand of somebody. While we are praying, when we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us. It is that we have fellowship with God, with one another. While you are sitting in the congregation on a Sunday morning, without even knowing it, there's a cleansing going on. Whatever mess you carry is wiped away. What, are you hearing me here today? When the man of God starts on the pulpit, he gave them an instruction. When he breathed upon them, he said, receive the Holy Ghost. He said, whoever see you remit is remitted. Whoever see you return is returned. As I stand here and I say, you are free, he remits it immediately. 
Why? It's an authority, a provision of the apostolic in the church. I stretch my hand toward it. Whatever the enemy is using as an accusation over your destiny to afflict you, to hurt you, to keep you down at the sound of my voice, let that thing be removed from you. Let that thing be lifted from you. Let that judgment be lifted from you. Let that iniquity be lifted from you. Let mercy prevail over you. Let there be a cleansing of hell. Let there be a cleansing of sin. Let there be a cleansing of your failure. When you understand this, you don't run from church if you're messed up. You run to church. You sit down. You say, no, I can't go there now. I'm going to be like a hypocrite sitting down with all these holy people. How many holy people did you know? You are not hearing with all these holy people and all of that. Uh, when they lift their hand, I lift my hand again. Uh, I'm, I'm a hypocrite. Yes, we, we know you're a hypocrite. Still lift your hand. In lifting your hand, we can cure your hypocrisy. Are they hearing my voice? Be in the house of God. Sit down until God cleanses you. When we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ's son cleanses us from how many sins? All sins. Lift your hand and say, I am cleansed. These people here, I'm going to walk away from this pulpit now if I don't hear you. Lift your hand and shout, I am cleansed. Lift your hand and say, I don't carry judgment. I don't carry iniquity. Therefore, no devil can afflict my life. I walk in health. I walk in strength. No devil can afflict my life. Let your amen sound like thunder. The fourth mystery is the mystery of the therapeutic word. Therapeutic. Therapy. Have you heard of therapeutic? Huh? Have you heard of therapy before? Have you heard of healing before? Ah, uh, have you gone to hospital before? They say they want to massage you. They want to give you treatment. They talk about therapy. Are you hearing me? The word of God carries therapeutic powers. Every time you sit down listening to the word, healing is happening. I don't want to get into that because I'm going to deal with that in a few minutes. But let me just give you a simple example. Are you with me? Huh? Depression causes sickness. Is that true? You sit in church now, and I'm just talking, and I make a joke, and I teach something, and your faith rises. Depression goes. Suddenly, the power of that infirmity is broken. You didn't know that somebody just cured you of something. You don't understand what church has done for Nigerians. That's why when people out there on social media and everywhere are criticizing church, you need to get angry. They're not hearing. If you have my voice, say yes. You need to get angry. You need to get very seriously angry. Without church and preaching and messages of power in this nation, Nigeria will be hellfire. If there was no church, some of you here would be kidnappers now. I'm not joking. Is anybody hearing me? If there was no church, many of you here will go to your village, went to politicians. When they come back, you attack them, carry whatever they can with, and send them back again to collect more. You are not hearing me. The reason young people in Nigeria who don't have job are still moving and still surviving is because every time they walk into church, we give them hope. Remove that hope. Many of them will have killed human beings to rise. Come, am I talking to somebody here today? Why are many people still keeping their marriages? Because we give them hope. We speak into their life. No, you don't need to divorce. Give God time. He will give you a baby. Give God time. He will give you a baby. And we keep praying for them. One year passed. The man is still waiting. Five years is still waiting. Why? Because we gave them hope. That's why the hope survived. And then six years, seven years, the baby comes. We celebrate and we move on. But that hope got broken in the second year. 
Am I talking to somebody here today? But we stayed that we kept giving the hope. Anybody that says church is not working, the person said it's not working. Lift. Are you okay? Yeah. If you don't like it, go to court. I will win. I am Tinubu. Yeah. Lift your hand above your head. I declare over you today, nothing will go wrong in your life by the word. Yeah. No power will stop you by the word. Yeah. If you hear, if I hear your amen, you take your portion. Look at Proverbs 4.22 in the New Living Translation. Proverbs 4.22. Proverbs 4.22 in the New Living Translation. He said, okay, let me from 20 to 22. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them. And healing to their whole body. Are you with me? Yeah. Healing. Somebody say healing. healing. To my whole body. Yeah. While I'm talking to you now, healing is happening in every part of your body. Yeah. I thought your amen will make sense in this house. Yeah. You know, there are different kinds of drugs. There are drugs for prevention, drugs for diagnosis, relief, for cure, for maintenance. Every time you walk into church, one message is a drug curing one thing. Come on, are you hearing me? Some messages diagnose your condition. Others cure it. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. So while you are sitting here now, whenever a message is going on, the kind of drug you need is coming to you. Everybody doesn't have the same need. Some people here need antidepressants. Some need fertility drugs. While I'm speaking now, the antidepressants are collecting their own. The fertility owners are collecting their own. The anti-allergy owners are collecting their own. The antibiotic owners are collecting their own. Whatever you are level, take it in the name of Jesus. You need to understand there is therapy in the world. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22. That's why the man asked, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? Is there no balm in Gilead? Lift your voice and shout, there is balm in Gilead. I'll give you the last chance. Lift your voice and shout, there is balm in Gilead. No, but the problem is this. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Let's say a man went to hospital and a doctor finished diagnosing him. And the doctor said, uh, young man, uh, this is your condition. Do you believe me? The young man said, of course I believe you. You are the best doctor in town. You are highly recommended. It's okay. Now this is the drug you are going to take. Take three in the morning. Take three in the afternoon. Take three in the night. Do it for the next eight days and come back for another checkup. The young man said, thank you. Now, he goes back home. A friend asked him a question. He said, did you go to hospital? Of course I went to hospital. Wow, which hospital? Ah! <laughs> I went to on top, Messi. Did you meet the doctor there? Ah, I saw him. In fact, he sat in the tent and gave me prescription. You're not hearing. He said, that man, he's highly anointed though. Very highly anointed. In fact, the kind of message he preached, I have not had it in a long time. Okay. The next day. He said, I, I thank God I met that man. I thank God I met that man. That doctor, a good doctor. A good doctor. Morning passed. He didn't take medicine. Afternoon. Somebody asked, did you go to the hospital? He said, I went there. That doctor, eh, he, he diagnosed my case immediately. He said, that man, he's intelligent. Oh. He hasn't taken the medicine. Even in again. Somebody asked him, 
He's all boy. I will recommend that hospital. That hospital is a powerful one. Hey! The moment I sat down, the man told me everything. He can diagnose without thinking. He said, that man? Huh. Night passed. Day one. He doesn't take in the drug. Day two, he celebrated the doctor. No drug. Then, he will carry drug and we put him in the grave. The reason members of church are dying is not because there's no bam in Gilead. It's not because there's no physician there. It's simply because they won't take the treatment. You finish teaching, they take it as a suggestion. They go back up, they won't obey it. They give shout to our papa. Eh? Hey, 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 our papa. Eh? Hey, 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 our papa. Eh? You'll be papa, you can die for nothing. There is bomb in Gilead. There is a physician in Gilead. Don't die. Take your medicine. Touch your neighbor, somebody around you like I say, oh God, take your medicine, no. <laughs> Touch another person, say, take your medicine, no. <laughs> you sit down on Sunday, I teach you on financing, I teach you on giving, I teach you on righteousness, I teach you on prayer. Take your medicine. Are you with me? Let me give you an illustration. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That is one medicine I gave you long ago. If you don't know what to say, either keep quiet or say what God said. That was my prescription. Check yourself from morning to day until you came here and see whether you took your medicine. Some of you today have subtracted something from your destiny. By the words you confessed. Spiritual things, apology, no day. It's a system of laws. So while you are blowing the grammar in the office, and there was a minus two. <laughs> you are not hearing me. I said that contract minus it. I minus the other one too. Minus, when you finish all your confession. The minus both the one that is there and the one that is coming. Life and death are in the power of the time. People pick them up, they're coming. He said, Papa, 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 eh, I am dying, you no. Know? I say, Amen. Amen. And they get angry. You are dying. Why will you be dying? Are you with me? Don't you know what to say? The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. Let the weak say, I am strong. So when you don't know what to say, either shut up or say what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? By his stripes. So you say, then what do I say? Papa, I am being challenged by diabetes. I want you to speak a word because I believe in the healing power of God. No, Papa, I'm dying. Papa, I'm dying. I don't understand my body. My body is shaking. I don't die. You say something now. Say something now. Say something now. <laughs> Just the phone call had canceled my prayer. Before I pray, you have withdrawn all the prayer. Touch somebody again you like beside you and say, Take your medicine. Yeah. Our time is gone. Take your another person. Take your medicine. Proverbs 18, 20, 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 12, verse 18, the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise brings healing. Brothers and sisters, the word is there. You notice something wrong in your system. You pick up the Bible. You begin to declare what the word says. You begin to declare what the word says. So mightly greet the word of God and prevail. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. You speak speaking. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Ah? Huh? Ah? Huh? How many of you understand that you don't use greater until they say great? Ah? Huh? So when the Bible says, greater is he that is in you, that means there's a great out there. 
So what you are facing is big, but there's something bigger in you. And what is bigger in you until you release it, it doesn't have the one outside. So you have greater in you, but you're not releasing the greater in you. You are talking like the world. You are acting like the world. And the greater one in you is dormant. You see, every picture in the Bible tells you about the Christian life. They were moving on the sea. And the wind is boisterous. And water is flooding their ship. And everybody is shaking. And it's dark. And they don't know what to do. But Jesus is in the ship. And he's sleeping. And one of them ran to him and woke him up. Master, don't you care that we perish? He got up and rebuked the wind. And rebuked the wave. Peace be still. And there was a great calm. And Johnny continued. If they didn't wake him up, he won't wake up. No, you didn't hear me. Is anybody hearing my voice? There is someone in your wake him, touch your neighbor and say, wake him up. You know, many years ago, I was reading something and it just touched me. When Jesus was going with the two men on the way to Emmaus, and the Bible said when they got to the house, he behaved as if he wanted to go away and they constrained him to come in with them. He was walking away. They constrained him to come in with them. If you didn't constrain him, he won't come in. So don't die with the word there. You felt pain in your body. And the first thing you thought is, hey, now, so then they, now this village I go, they don't come again. They don't come again. Papa Chukwu did not fire something. <laughs> you are not here. <laughs> it's, 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 I knew it. I knew, and I shouldn't have gone. See, now my leg is bending me. Papa Chukwu, you walk there. Why? He said, I told you that man a wicked man. Oh. That man a wicked man. All that time you are talking, Papa Chukwu, the, the thing is settling down. Are you hearing me? What should you do? You put your hand there in the name of Jaro. Go back to sin. People like me don't get sick. Arrows don't stay on people like me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every man that rests against me in judgment, I condemn that man. Whoever sent this, fire! Are they hearing my voice? Don't die where they die. You feel pain in your chest. I talk, I talk, I talk, I talk this heart attack. This heart attack, this heart attack, this heart attack. please, please. Uh, thank God I've written my will. <laughs> you are dead. Are they here? Lift up your right hand higher than your head. Nobody here will die this year. Every one of you by this time next year, you'll be here celebrating one year of no drugs. One year of no headache. One year of no accident. One year of no evil attack. One year of nothing negative to report. If you shout amen, let it be recorded for you. Let heaven confirm it for you. Let it be done for your father's house. If your amen rises, you take your posture. We're almost done. Are you still with me? Well, I'm not two minutes. I'm teaching long, so please bear with me. The fifth mystery is the mystery of the jubilant heart. The mystery. I give you five mysteries when it comes to healing and health. The mystery of the jubilant heart. In Proverbs 4.23, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are what? The issues of life. Anytime the soul is unhealthy, the body will breed diseases. Anytime the soul is unhealthy, the body will breed diseases. There is what they call psychosomatic illnesses. That is physical symptoms from mind-related afflictions. Psyche is a Greek word for the mind. Soma is a Greek word for body. Psychosomatic. That is mind walking on the body and creating afflictions. Psychosomatic illnesses. When there is fear, when there is anger, when there is bitterness, when there is depression, the body becomes damaged. 
Proverbs 18 verse 14. Proverbs 18 verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit who can bear. The spirit of a man is a strong immunity. It's a strong antibody. It can stop the attack of infirmity. He said, but when your mind is weakened, you are open to destruction. Look at Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22, quickly. He said, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dried the bones. Let me read it in the New Living Translation. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. A cheerful heart is good medicine. A broken spirit removes your strength. Listen to me. All of you that are finding reasons to be unhappy, It's not only you that this world is tormenting. Are you, are you hearing me? You see, I preach that to you because there's a lot, of, a lot of foolishness in a lot of people. When you see others dress well and are moving, there's what Ibo man called Amachu or George. You are not hearing me. Are you hearing me? You take all the wahala and take a big judge wrapper and tie on top of it. When they call for God's meeting, you show up. You are not hearing me. When you appear in August meeting, as your land village, they think you are living in a mansion in Portaco. They don't know you came from Bacha. That is a special cloth you came with. Am I talking to somebody here? It's called that mature a judge. Nobody knows where you came out from. And in this age, people don't know care where you live. They care what lives in you. Is anybody hearing my voice here? Stop behaving as if you're the only one the world is hard for. There are some people that when you see them, you go to beg them for money. You didn't know their family has not paid school fees. Because every time they're smiling, Every time they're carrying on a bullion, every time they're speaking bold and speaking nice. Some of you, when you see us do some things, you think it's because of much cash, it's because of much faith. We keep moving, we keep moving, we keep moving, we keep moving. I declare over you, life will not defeat you. Stop this nonsense depression. If you don't shake it off, it will shake you down. Shake it off. The pressure will come. The darkness will come. But every day you wake up, you tell yourself, today is a plus. This is a day the Lord has made. I, judge, is who I will rejoice. No matter the opposition, no matter the circumstance, no matter the darkness, I am not six feet down. I am still on top of the earth. Today is a day to celebrate. God is a good God. Life is working. My health is working. My home is working. My career is working. My business is working. My marriage is working. Somebody shout, everything is working. We speak it by faith and God creates it for fact. Keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Amen? Uh, you say, I don't know how to pay school fees. I don't know what they, the way things are going. The way things are going. The way things are going. You are not the only one in Nigeria. We don't have a special place we buy a dollar. There's no special institution for pastors. <laughs> you didn't hear me. <laughs> Did you go to market and say, this market, this line is for pastors? Pastors buy from there. There's a discount. It's the same filling station. It's the same dollar rate. It's the same. Please, are you hearing my voice? 
when we are shouting on the pulpit, it's not because there's anything. Is there, Pastor? It's because there is some, you know, listen to me. Listen. Okay, if you are broke now, you are the one that gives. Is that true? So if you are broke, obviously you can't give. And if you can't give, our income is meant to reduce. Is that true? So if our income reduces, I start talking like you. How does it sound? He said, I don't understand the income they reduce. Oh. I can't understand. Since this dollar thing, eh, people know they give again. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to complete this project. Oh. God has resigned. Oh. Turn the fire, Satan. You see, the foolishness you are doing should be obvious to you. It should be obvious to you. When you see pastors shouting and screaming and prophesying, are they having another market other than you? If I pay for flight, it's the same flight, the same cost, the same market, the same everything. So our confession is because of what we believe. You have to get sense and do it the right way. And then get up in the morning and free yourself with joy and tell yourself it's working. Is anybody hearing me? They get you on the bills, you can't pay. You look at them, you laugh. Say, man, they can't carry me now. <laughs> you are not hearing me. <laughs> they give me all the bills. The money is not there. What do you do? I say, man, they can't carry me now. Nothing. <laughs> Who get time to answer them? We move. <laughs> they say, you are owing. I say, sure. I was telling the pastors yesterday, I said, the best thing to owe is to owe much. The only people that they disturb are those who are owing small. I told you before, any man that's owing bank one billion, bank not the portion. The ones they portion are those who are owing 200,000, 500,000. When you are owing 10 billion, bank, if they hear you are sick, they'll fly your blood. <laughs> they know if you die, their money don't die. They will pray for you to be okay. If I when they come to ask you for the money, the first one, the first one will start with pleading. They ask you, how are you? <laughs> because if they can give you heart attack, it's all over. They say, sir, we want to see you in Abuja. You say, okay. They say, we're sending the ticket to pick, uh, fly. They gave you a business class, you come. And you finish, you say, the money never comes. They say, oh, get, don't worry. It will come. <laughs> when you're owing much, uh, <laughs> stop worrying yourself. Somebody told me the other day, he said, the man that I owe some money is harassing me. He's coming. He said, he's going to take me to prison. I said, no, be people, they go there. I said, Apostle Paul went to prison. If you go there, you are like Apostle Paul. Bro. Are you hearing me? Why are you bothering yourself? You didn't kill anybody. It's just that you borrowed money to add to your business. Why are you struggling? Stop living a life that is frustrating. Find humor in twins. Find humor in things. If you have my voice, say yes. Every time you're frustrated, I don't understand. You see, the other day, I found gray hair on my head. Gray hair, gray hair, gray hair. And I never marry. Great hair. I never marry. No wonder Osa is killing you. Move on. Move on. Touch your neighbor. Move on. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I'll be glad in it. I don't understand. It's my birthday. Nobody to take me out. Take yourself. <sighs> take yourself out. Take yourself out. Take yourself out. The many of you are so tensed up now. School is about to start. Where is the money coming from? How do we pay school fees? Excuse me. Make good food first and eat. Eat first. At least be alive before school fees. 
If you hear my voice, say yes. If you don't want to die before your time, don't carry overload. No overload, the bench charges. Oh, carry overload. Oh, carry overload. Life now, only one soul. Only one soul. Only one soul. Only one soul. Some of you here now are, are, are postponing your joy, postponing your happiness until you finish raising children. You are being stupid. Are you hearing me? I told you a story some time ago when the, my son got an admission in one particular school and they told me how much the school will be abroad. I said, no, you are not going. My wife said, but you have some money, you can pay for that. I said, yes, but it's a sustenance of it. I'm not going to pay that. I said, look at the amount of conversion in Nigeria. I said, I'm not going to pay that. I said, school has come. <laughs> you're, you're not hearing me. He said, how can you say that? I said, it's not what, this thing is not what the education, it's not what the certificate there. I said, this amount of money I'm going to use now to pay for his school fees, first year, second year, third year, and fourth year abroad. As if I save that money and put it in a bank and send him to Alaba to sit down with my village man and know the strategies of how to meander this thing. And when he graduates in two years from the man, I take that amount of money and give him. Bro, he will be a billionaire before his mess graduate. I said, let's stop running around all this calm. Oh, you both people are making waves from Nigeria. Britain, all of Europe are surviving from Nigeria. Their schools cannot maintain themselves. Only Africans are paying for their maintenance. Please, I'm not lying to you, Jake. It's our people paying for their maintenance. All they're doing is scam. There's nothing that teaching higher than what they're teaching in Africa here. Our students here learn more than them. No, you didn't hear me. Quote me anywhere. Apart from the technical science courses, every other thing, our students here learn more than them. And the only reason why the science ones look like they're better is because they have the equipment we don't have. Any other thing, stony here is better. Take as much out. My daughter did it the, when, she, me, when she went to school over there. She lost one year, entered the school there, and found out that there's nobody in the class that could meet up with her. What that's learning in the class, she has passed it two years earlier. So what are you talking about? There's nothing that teaching that you, it's not better than what you have. But calm down. He said, no, no, no. My child must go to that school. Then they dash brain in that school. Find the one you can pay for. If you are hearing my voice, I hear you. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, the, you know, you know, you know, we have to postpone this wedding. Why are we postponing? You know, uh, uh, we, I can't wed like this. I must have my own wedding gown. My own. My own. My own. I can't use a borrowed one. Now wait till you go where for one day. In three hours, it is gone. Borrow the one you feel borrow. You didn't hear me. Borrow hall. If I borrow soup for your wedding day, if it's possible, I move on. Live a life of joy and sickness. We go. If you hear my voice, say yes. That ulcer is not what you ate, it's what is eating you. Don't let, the, don't let the devil eat you. As you are hearing me now, did they hear me? Uh, uh, I must buy that wristwatch. I'm a, I saw the other sister the other day. The kind of watch. Uh, you see, the kind of phone that I hold it. See, see me at my age, uh, at my level. Look at the phone I'm holding. There's no phone that can call God. Move on. Move on. Move on. Stop being stupid. Move on. Nobody cares the quality of your food. A poor man with a good food is still a poor man. Stop. 
Lift your hand and say, I will walk in joy. I will walk in peace. I will walk in love. And I will walk in health. Can your amen sound like thunder? Let me wrap up with Psalm 16. Psalms chapter 16. Did you catch something today? Verse 7. He said, I will bless the Lord who had given me counsel. My rents also instruct me in the night season. Brothers and sisters, in the night season of life, may you have enough sense to instruct yourself. He said, my rents instruct me when night comes. There are many people in the night season of life, nothing is teaching them. Nothing tells them, calm down. The thing that is hot can be cold. My rents instruct me in the night season. Now verse 8, I have said the Lord, always before me, because he is at my right hand, is God at your right hand? I shall not be moved. What, what happens now? Verse 9, that's where I'm going to. Therefore, my heart is glad. My glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Somebody say hope. hope. Why am I hopeful? Why am I rejoicing? Why am I excited? What did my heart tell me in the night season? Look at what my heart told me. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to say come. You won't see shame. Yeah. I say you won't see shame. Yeah. So how do you guarantee that you're walking healing ahead? Number one, connect to the vine and cut the Holy Ghost. Stay in the vine and be in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Settle down in the house of God. Be in relationship with the Holy Ghost. Serve in the house of God. Be in relationship with the Holy Ghost. Fellowship with people of God. Be a relationship with the Holy Ghost. That's the first thing. If you don't value the church, you don't value the life of the vine. Secondly, believe and keep declaring your covenant promises. Believe it and keep declaring it. My body is kingdom territory. Nyama nyama is not permitted here. Lift your right hand and shout, my body is kingdom territory. Sickness, get out. The third thing, carefully maintain your body and protect your heart. Maintain your body, protect your heart. How do you maintain your body? Stop overeating. Stop eating junk food. Stop alcoholism. Stop drugs. Stop jumping from bed to bed. Stop lying down morning, afternoon, and night without exercise. Protect your body. Get up and move. If you are here, you don't have an exercise routine. You are signing up for weakness and for early death. I don't care who you are. No matter how anointed you are, at least take a walk every day for 30 minutes. Is that, if you have me, say yes. yes. If you can't do it every day, do it at least three times in a week. That you are slim doesn't mean you are not sick. You can be very slim and very unfit. Is anybody hearing my voice here? You see small young people in church, the moment you see that you are worshiping right now, the moment you say, amen, before you know it, they are down the chair, boom. So what's wrong with them? When I finish now, I say, can we rise up? It will take them two minutes to get up. You see some women that you can say that are that fat and all of that, and they've gotten up, and this young boy, looking very tiny, is he struggling to get up? Small doesn't mean healthy. It may mean affliction is eating you inside. Move up and down. Exercise yourself. Are they hearing my voice? Exercise yourself. If you can take a walk continually, the asthma will reduce. Yes, your breathing will begin to clear. 
One of the greatest cures of diabetes is taking a walk. 30 minutes every day. 15 minutes every day. You find out that your sugar level normalizes without any drugs. Stop living a sedentary life. And stop eating Gary by 7 p.m. Are they hearing me? Stop! Some of you now, as you are going home, Gary is waiting. Stop! Don't again. Take care of your body. That's how to avoid sickness. I told the pastors I mentor. One of the reasons pastors die early is fasting. That you break stupidly. You fast from morning to six o'clock, finish your service, get back, and your wife gives you a mountain of Gary. And you settle down. <laughs> you find yourself a little. I said, This mountain. <laughs> Why won't you die early? When we say mountain must move, it's not mountain of Gary. Are they hearing me? And those of you that abuse drugs, you know all the drugs. You don't consult doctors. You don't go for any checkup. The moment there's any headache, you take something. You swallow. You take another you swallow. You know all the herbs. That's the reason why there's so much chronic kidney failure and liver failure in Nigeria. Drinking things that nobody has confirmed this vitality is uh, good. Every time you are drinking this, you are drinking this, you are drinking this. And when it gets at you, you run to church. Take care of your body. And there are some of you that need to go and do a checkup to find out what's wrong with you. Go do the checkup. Go do the checkup. I don't have money. I don't have any no rich health. I don't have money. I don't have money. No rich health. If you die now, they find money enough to bury you. Go do a checkup. Know what's wrong with you. At least know what to pray about. If you have my voice, I hear you. Take care of you. Take care of you. Everywhere you are, hear me. Take care of you. Mind what you eat. Mind what you drink. Stop all of this. Uh, this one, give me drugs. This one, give me drugs. Stop. Take care of you. This is not a joke. The moment your health is impaired, your life is messed up. If you, have, if, you have, if you have stroke now, all your children start suffering. They start carrying you from here to there. Your wife can't rest. Poverty everywhere. You don't need it. So live well. If you have my voice, say yes. I keep forcing myself, no matter how terrible my program is, at least three times a week I exercise. Stop killing yourself. Don't be foolish. Mind what you say. Mind what you eat. Mind what you drink. Clean your house of any nonsense. And then trust the Lord. If you have my voice, say yes. Do your best. Finally, reject and resist every agent and arrow of infirmity. Resist it. Reject it. Fight it. Satan, you can't take me down before my time. Thunder fire you. You and your grandmother. Everyone associated with you die. Is anybody hearing me here today? I can't be sick. And they said they found something here. I can't be sick. If you have my voice, say yes. And please let me say this to some of you here, particularly those of you that are pregnant. Please listen to me. There's no law in this church against surgery. There's no law against surgery. If you're pregnant and the doctor said you can't push out and you have tried and your energy is getting low, please elect a surgery immediately and walk away. It's better you spend money and come out with your baby than you go for it's all right. Um, are you hearing my voice here? 
He said, I, I'm believing God. This baby came by a miracle. I was born on by a miracle. And then we see you in the grave. Listen to me. When it comes to health, spare no expense to keep yourself healthy. When it comes to health, stop thinking about money. Get yourself healthy. Only a healthy man can produce more money. Don't take your wife to a stupid clinic. Take care of yourself. If you are going to oh oh, if they burn the picking, are you not fit pay? Let them keep them there sweeping. <laughs> but let your wife be safe. I am talking to you because you are my people. I've extended our time by 15 minutes now talking to you. Is anybody hearing my voice? When I'm done, this is September. Between today. And the last of September next year, not one has spring on you. Yeah. Every sickness, die in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet.